Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and thanks for checking out this quick little video on solving a real world problem. So, just to give you an explanation of what's going on and then I'm going to go to a point in the video and pause it to let you figure the problem out and come up with a solution to fix it. So, in this environment we have two different network interfaces that we want to do some ACL on with firewall rules to control what's allowed to go out and in. So we have the, the LAN interface, and LAN interface is the main network. It's got all the secure machines that we want to protect. And then we have the VPN that goes out, which is tunneling all the traffic outside of the network. So the ISP IP is not the one being used, and everything is more private, more secure, and encrypted going out. So for the LAN, at the top we have, you know, anything on this network that's not going to the local network is going to go out the OpenVPN tunnel. And then when it hits the OpenVPN tunnel, we're looking at, okay, 443 allowed, A, DNS, and so on going out, drop everything out. So the problem here is that if we try to access something that's not one of those port numbers, we get blocked. And if we look at the live view, uh, we did a, a filter for that port number, and you can see that you know on the LAN, the LAN's like, okay, cool, you're allowed to access that because it's basically the default all to VPN. But once we get to the VPN interface, no, you're not allowed. You're blocked. We're going to stop you. So here's the thing. We need to be able to access that, but we only want to allow, say, this one specific machine to go out. But we can't add a rule to the LAN because if we were to add one, this rule here is going to take precedence and be, well, it's a default out. But we also can't add a rule here because we don't get the source IP of the actual machine. We only get the IP of the tunnel. And then that's basically saying, hey, if anything you know on this IP is allowed out, well, that's every machine behind that IP. So that's the dilemma. So. Your question is, and you can pause the video at any point, how would you allow just one machine out on a specific port, but also keeping all the other machines, you know, locked down and blocked and only allow them to go out, you know, specific ports like this? So that is the question, and I'm gonna pause the video, or you can pause the video actually, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the solution as well. Now there's always gonna be many ways to solve a problem. There's never gonna be a right or wrong. It's just gonna be a matter of understanding the environment and then the quickest and most efficient way to implement that change. Okay, so let's talk about the solution. So what I did was I went ahead and I just dropped all the rules straight out of the OpenVPN tunnel interfaces. So for the tunnel out, the only thing we have now is just to block everything coming in. Uh, just cause you know, we should ever have any traffic coming in. So let's drop it. And then for the open VPN, we also did the exact same thing, but because of how the interface works, it's flopped. So instead of having an in, we're, instead of blocking the in, we're blocking the out just because of how the interfaces work. And then going back to the LAN, we did the same thing. Uh, we copied the rules over and just flipped the, the routing. So instead of being out, it's now an in. So going down the list, we no longer have the default catch all and send everything anywhere outside the, the VPN. We now have the very specific rule sets right now. We need to update these real quick and change this so they go outside the uh, VPN. That's not right, that's just six. We wanna do four. And let's do this one here as well. Okay, apply. So now, when anything comes from the, the local network interface network, and it's going anywhere, we're gonna go ahead and say, oh, okay, allow it. And it's just going to be, you know, set to that gateway. Now we could also, you know, continue to copy this alias down the, the list here. So if it's not going to local, we can send it out that way. But in this case, it really doesn't matter because local to local is allowed because it's on the same switch, same network. So there's really no transitioning from one network to the next. So either way is fine. But if you really want it to be very specific, which I do like being very specific when it comes to doing an allow, 
I'm very, I just do it exactly so it has to match every little detail and then it's allowed. When I'm doing like a block, I'm very, very open and just block everything and then I'll allow everything based on very specifics. Moving down, I decided that, you know, for this uh, machine, you know, TCP, UDP, uh, let's, if it's not going to that local network, I don't, I don't really care what port it's trying to access, let's send it on its way and it's going to go out that VPN gateway. And those gateway interfaces have no firewall rules to prevent or block anything. So now we have full access. Now there's other ways you could do this. You could have you know every machine with its own IP on the gateway, depending on how you want to do your network. Uh, but in this case, this was the quickest and most efficient way to actually give us control, but also allow the connect to be out. So if I refresh this page, we have access, we can now see it. And we look at the firewall rule live traffic, we can see that, well, it's laying itself out. Now there is one little tidbit of information here I also wanna expand on before we close out the video. For descriptions, always label them. And when you label them, do it very, very specifically. So when you're troubleshooting, as you can see, we have the, the label with all the info, with the description in it. When you're troubleshooting, that can help you determine which rule something is triggering on or being caught on or whatever the case might be. And then when I do label them, I'm doing you know very specific as to what that rule is. And then I try and also label uh, the interface. Is it in a rule and out rule? And I know you can get that information from, from these firewall rules and logs right here, but sometimes just having them printed out on the label makes it really easy. Uh, because in some cases, you may not be aware you have like a floating rule and in the, in the case when I was debugging this entire network, there was a lot of default drop all rules, but none of those rules had descriptions. So trying to figure out like where the and why the traffic was you know being blocked, and I, it took a while because there was actually a, a default drop all in the floating rules that was you know hitting all the network interfaces. And because there's no description, it, it took a while to try and figure out where it was coming from because in the case of using a floating rule it's going to show the interface that it, it's happening on. And when the interface also has the same rule as the floating rule, it, it does get confusing. So just a little bit of tidbit information there. Always be descriptive, always label things. It will help you and save, save you time. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this video. I've got some more other little videos coming on, out with some tidbits of information that you can you know, have fun with troubleshooting and problem solving as if you were in the environment and being paid to do that. So if you're job hunting, hopefully these type of videos really help you out and help you do some critical thinking. And if there's something you want to hear about uh, and learn, I will make some videos on that. So just let me know. Be sure to like, subscribe, and have a great day, guys.